Okay, so now we're actually going to build the final environment. So this this will be the equivalent of chapter six in the Linux, the normal Linux from scratch. So something about package management again, you probably wouldn't want this if you are going to rebuild the real um, the real uh, Linux from scratch on top of this or on the target machine. So test suites, um, I did run the test suites when I was testing this and uh, generally the tests were okay. Um, I think it was glibc, I found there's a few extra errors than normal, but I, I put that down to the fact that this was a 486 that was building for, um, the fact that it was cross-compiling. Um, I wasn't overly worried, but I'm, I'm not going to run the test now just to save time as well. I know this will work. Um, it's up to you if you want to run the tests and you know try and fix things if, if you're not happy with the results. But I'm, I'm going to carry on without doing any tests, despite the fact that I've just installed the test packages, but that they are there. I may decide to do one or two of the quick ones, possibly just to prove that it's working, but uh, I don't see it's really necessary for this demonstration. So the first thing that's going to be installed unusually as Perl and it says here in this note the reason why that is they've had problems when it's been built under the cross compile part so we're not actually going to be building Perl at this point to install in the normal user bin location or, or bin even whichever it is you'll see that it's actually being installed into the tool. So it, it, this is still really part, technically it's part of the temporary tools part, um, which we last did um, in, in chapter six of this CLFS book. So I'll make one change and Okay, so now we can build this.
Okay, so let's install this. And we'll create a sim link which will be overwritten when the real Perl gets installed. And it's done. So now let's move on to Linux, the kernel. 